Welcome everyone, in today's video we're gonna take another deep dive in the game of Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. In this game, in 2010, uh, he played against Grandmaster Alexei Shira from Latria. He's one of, the great, uh, one of the greats of our time and it's very underrated Grandmaster. Hikaru Nakamura played against this person and this is one of the greatest chess games that was played by uh, Hikaru. It's very amazing and let's uh, dive into it. So, if we're played by Hikaru, uh, C5 played by Shirov is known as Sicilian defense. And after a few moves, you get the open Sicilian. After C takes D5, and we get uh, we get very classical variation. Shrashnikov uh, played by Shirov, which is E5 move. After that, Hikaru goes for uh, a sideline, which is Knight B5. D6 played by Shirov, and now Bishop G5 played by uh, Nakamura. So this kind of play during Sicilian uh, is known as Four Knights variation, where the knights are four knights are developed, and White is trying to maintain that pressure that he has on this uh, on this. Uh, side of the board and also black is trying to push the pawns here and put the knights into a very bad squares as you can see h6 and after uh, taking the knight here pawn takes and now uh, uh, now knight goes to a3 in this position you can't really take with the queen because after queen takes this is check and you lose the rook so only way is that to take with the pawn and knight now goes to a3 as you can see the white's idea was to uh, have pressure on this diagonal and they had pressure and they managed to dislocate and uh, ruin the black spawn structure and the black's idea was to uh, put this knight out of the game and put in a very bad square as I said everything that I said happened so the game is 0 0 0 because there no one has any advantage and there is no imbalance in the position that can be exploited by any player a5, which is pretty normal move in this position. Knight goes to c4. I think this is a bit of inaccuracy. Uh, in this position, NG suggests that uh, he takes uh, c5 is the good move, bishop c4, but it's still a normal move. It doesn't change a position in any way, uh, and it doesn't change evaluation. Everything is still normal. And this move is considered pretty normal at the times, uh, at that time. So now knight goes to d4. Now takes. Bishop takes, knight goes to e3, attacking the bishop, bishop goes to g6, knight goes to d5, and we get this position. Where knight here is, in, uh, is centralized but has to move because of this move, now bishops are looking at these diagonals, they are very active, so the white has to move the knight and the bishops are maintaining their threat, the white has to develop the bishop and centralize the queen. So let's see how this player should do that. Knight e6, now bishop comes to d3, after uh, this pawn takes on e3, you have to take with the knight, and now when queen comes attacking b2, you're gonna uh, castle or do something about that. So Nakamura castled, uh, hanging, uh, not hanging, but sacrificing the pawn here, knight f4 played by Shirov, and after bishop to e2, in this position, I think that um, evaluation is still equal, but I think black has some sort of advantage because he has a lot of more threats, but uh, because these pieces are now tangled, really can't move in a very free square, but it's very easy for uh, white to get out of the situation, like knight c4 almost solves every problem, attacks the queen, attacks the pawn, and defends this pawn uh, on b2. Uh, so it will be very easy for a white to uh, have another have another important move. So if black doesn't uh, uh, activate very quickly and uh, loses some time, Nakamura will have great position. So bishop to f3. Now check. Now uh, Shiro goes for attack. This check is happening for a specific reason because you can't take the knight because if you take the knight. Uh, this move just uh, this move just ends the game because after this and uh, this you're gonna lose the queen even though it has some material it's not worth it knight h1 check knight h3 check and he has to go to h1 now he's now mm, uh, he still takes the pawn here and he's a pawn up in this position but Nakamura gets a major positional advantage yeah meaning that um, the, the idea is to if Nakamura takes and Nakamura has to take uh, I win the knight pack and this is what played rook f2 and Queen takes e3 is played. Now uh, bishop takes b7. Rook comes to b8. 
now attacking the queen with uh, rook e2 and few moves later we get into this position where rook is centralized here queen is also centralized this pawn is defended this bishop doesn't really serve a purpose and this rook is very active and this rook is very passive this bishop has major squares that can cover and this is how nakamura is i think winning in this position because he has many 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 activities f5 played by Shirov. now rook comes to f1 king comes to d7 pawn goes to b4 now pawn goes to f4 pawn goes to a5 and nakamura is just rolling down the opponent's position a5 a now b5 and after rook d1 rook d8 uh g3 played by Shirov. uh if f takes g3 and pawn takes g3, king goes to uh, king goes to c8, and now c4 move, move played by Nakamura. Nakamura is just winning in this position. He has bishop that is controlling everything. Rook is very passive from um, Shiro, and this queen is very bad. After uh, king b8, Nakamura plays another best move, which is rook f6. Now another good move, but not very good move, not very uh, accurate move by uh, Shiro, but it still it keeps the game going. King h2, now pawn push by uh, Shiro. It, even though it's a best move, it's gay all over after c5. c5 just wins the game right on the spot. Uh, you might think why, but c5 just ends the game right away uh, and this move just has for you have four point advantage no matter what you do in this position you're gonna lose the game okay uh, e5 played by um, played by alexei and now the camera misses this chance and plays this very awkward move which is uh queen c3 even though oh white is still winning it's a very not a very good move from a strategical standpoint because you're gonna you missed a very big opportunity so rook comes to uh, c8 now rook comes to e3 and after uh king a7 bishop to c6 is played by another great great move now rook comes to d8 and nakamura in this position plays uh, as you can imagine, another great move that I would call a brilliant move in this position, which is after takes, you can, you can play now bishop takes the pawn, the rook is here attacking the queen and this bishop is very loose, after rook d6, after takes, takes and uh, queen takes a5, uh, Mr. Alexei Shirov resigns in this position because no matter what you do, you're gonna lose the game. So best move in this position is... Um, uh, king, uh, king b8 but this is met with rook d3 which ends the game in almost instantaneously no matter what you do you have to take the knight, uh, rook and you're gonna lose the game it is all over so after that move uh, Alexei Shiro resigns this was one of the greatest games of, um, F of at the start of the 20s, 1000s, Nakamura played amazing chess. He was attacking all the time and he played a, gr a great move, which is uh, c5. This move is just amazing, sacrificing the pawn like that. Uh, and Nakamura uh, find the way to break through his opponent and had, uh, had a major, major advantage during this game. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.